So today we're going to talk about parabolas. And a geometrical definition of a parabola is the set of all points equidistant from a given point that we call focus and a given line called a directrix. In front of us we see two types of parabolas, one which is a function and one which isn't because it doesn't pass a vertical line test. But in both cases you'll see that we have this figure that looks like a U or a parabola, if you will. And every point on this curve, this red curve, is equidistant from this dotted line, the directrix, and this point inside of the parabola called a focus. Also, you can note within this parabola, we've got our line of symmetry, a line that just folds over. And you'll notice also, in this case, that this distance here is P, and also this distance here is known as P. So it's equidistant from the line and the focus by definition. Likewise, in this horizontal parabola, there's our focus again, our directrix. We have a distance P to the focus, P to the directrix from every given point on the curve. So if I look at this point here, the distance to that point is the same as the distance to that line if I've drawn an accurate picture. As far as equations for parabolas go, if I have a horizontal directrix, my equation is as follows. x minus h squared is equal to 4p times y minus k. If I've got a vertical directrix, I have y minus k squared is equal to 4p times x minus h. The way I remember it is the term that's not being squared has the 4p on it, and also that indicates the direction that the parabola is opening. Notice the parabola opens up, so the y is not being squared and carries the 4p. The parabola opens left or right, and x is not being squared and carries the 4p. Now, if I want to open to the right, in this case, my p term is positive, left, p term negative, up, p term positive, down, p term negative. So what we're going to do in this first example is find the vertex focus and directrix of this picture and then graph the parabola. Now one thing we probably ought to go back and tell you also, I didn't indicate in this point, is that the distance from the focus, if I draw a perpendicular to the line of symmetry, through the focus into both sides, there's actually 2p on either side of that segment. So that's going to help us draw in this next example. So we know right off the bat that the y term is not being squared and it has a negative in front of it, which means it's probably going to end up going down. So let's do a couple of things. H in this case is negative 1. K is negative 2, so that's my vertex. Negative 1, negative 2. I know that 4P is equal to 8. P is equal to 2. Notice I'm giving a positive value of P because P is basically a distance. The negative says it goes down. So now what I'm going to do is construct a graph and identify some of the points we've been asked to find. Vertex we have right here. I'm going to go over 1, down 2. Put that vertex. I know this is going to go down. I have a distance of 2. 
and that's going to be my focus. So my focus is at negative 1 and negative 4. If I move up to, that puts me at my directrix. That directrix will be a horizontal line. So my directrix has an equation of y equals 0. And if I go 2p to either side, so in other words, if I go 4 to either side, I'll get two points on that parabola. So I can do a rough sketch of the graph. So there we go. We've got our vertex, our focus, our directrix, and we've sketched the graph. I'm going to do the same thing for the next problem. You'll see in this case, though, the x is not being squared, and we've got a negative again. This should open to the left. I know my h value is negative 3. My k value always goes with the y, so that's 2. So my vertex is equal to negative 3, 2. I know that 4p is equal to 1, and p is equal to negative 1 fourth. And I know since I have the negative, it opens to the left. Let's go ahead and start graphing. Here's negative 3 and 2. That's my vertex. I know this is going to open to the left, and I have a focus that's fourth away. So there's my focus and if I go up and down 2p in each case, so that's a half, I'll get those endpoints of the graph so I can sketch it. And if I move back a fourth, I get my directrix. So now, if I'm over 3 and move to the left a quarter, I'm at negative 3 and a quarter, and 2 up. That gives me my focus. I have a vertical line for my directrix, and it's a quarter back, or a quarter to the positive direction from negative 3. So that's negative 2 and 3 fourths is equal to x, and that's my directrix. And I've drawn my graph as such. Now in this next example, you'll see that I've got a situation where this is not in the form that I necessarily wanted it. We have to kind of go back to Algebra 2 to remember how to deal with a problem like this. In order to get this in such a form that I have some kind of squared term, I have to complete the square. And in order to complete the square, we take and isolate the variables on either side of the equation. So in this case, I have 8x plus 15 separated from the y terms because we want to get a perfect square for the y's. And in order to complete the square, you must have a coefficient of 1 in front of the squared term. We do in this case so I can continue. We take half that middle term which is 2, square that, and we get a value of 1. We take that 1, and we add it to both sides of the equation. This gets me quantity of y plus 1 squared, equaling 8x plus 16. Clean that up a little bit by factoring. That's 8 times the quantity of x plus 2 is equal to y plus 1 quantity squared. You'll notice now I've got this in the form that I need in order to find my vertex, my focus, and my directrix, and then to graph it. So I have a vertex, in this case of negative 2 and negative 1. 
I know that 4p in this case is equal to 8, so p is equal to 2. And in this case, my p term is positive. I know it's a x term carried with the 4p, so I know this opens to the left, or I'm sorry, to the right. And if we go ahead and start to graph that, here's negative 2, negative 1. I move 2 to the right, which puts me at a focus of 0 and negative 1. I move back 2. That gets me my directrix, which is an x equals line, negative 4. And then if I want to graph it, I'll draw from the focus 2p to either side, so that's 4. And sketch my curve from here. And then we fulfilled everything we needed. So what this form has brought up is it's brought up something called a general form. General form for parabolas are as follows. x squared plus dx plus ey plus f is equal to zero. And that gives us some kind of a parabola that either goes up or down. And the y squared equals dx plus ey plus f equals zero gives us some form of parabola that goes either opens to the left or it opens to the right. So now we're going to kind of go backwards and work with some information about the parabola and write an equation from it. So in this case, I have a parabola with a vertex at 5, 0. So that, once again, is my hk value. And if we, I like to sketch these out, so let's take and put a point here at 5, put a point here at negative 7. And I know that the parabola has to open around the focus, so it's going to look something like this. This tells me I've got my y term squared. I have a negative 4p term and then some x term. Now I'm going to fill in my h and k values with my values for the vertex. So that's y minus 0 is equal to negative 4. I'll leave the p term alone for a minute and then go x minus 5. I know in this case from 5 to negative 7 gives me my p value. That ends up being a total of 12. So I have y squared, sorry about that, equals negative 48 times x minus 5. And there's my equation of the parabola. Similar problem, but a little bit different. We take and have a focus of 2, 2, and a directrix at 10, with an equation of x equals 10, so it's a vertical line. I know my vertex has to be in between my focus and directrix, and it's got to be halfway between that. I know from 2 to 10 is a total of 8. So if I go halfway between that, I get my vertex. And I have to open up around the focus once again. And it looks like we're going to have a y squared equation. That point halfway between is 4 from 2. So that puts me at 6, 2 for a vertex. Therefore, I have a y minus 2 quantity squared is equal to my p-value. I have a total of 4 between that vertex and the focus. So 
So once again, since it's opening left, I have a negative 4 times 4. And now I take my x minus 6. And this should give me my equation. y minus 2 quantity squared is equal to negative 16 times x minus 6. I'm going to switch it up just a little bit and have a little word problem thrown in here. So in this case, we have the span of a bridge being 1,280 meters apart. And we know that from the middle of the bridge out is 640 meters. We know that its height up is 160 meters. And what this problem asks is, for 200 meters from the tower, in other words, 200 meters in this way, or to say that another way, for 200 meters in, or 440 meters from the center, how high up are we? The best way to deal with these problems is to assume that you're at zero, zero for your center. And if that's the case, I can write an equation, since this is an upwards opening parabola, of 4p times y is equal to x squared. And I know an x and y coordinate initially of 640 for my x and a total of 160 for my y. If I solve for p, I get 640 squared over 4 times 160. And p ends up equaling 640. Now, given that, I can rewrite an equation that says 4 times 640 times some height y is equal to this new x value of 440. And I can square that. Therefore, I can solve my y. For so if I take 440, square it, divide that by 4 times 640, I end up with 75.6. They want me to round it to the nearest meter. So 76 meters is the height. That's all we've got. Make sure you do your lesson summary in my math lab, and we'll discuss this more tomorrow.